Welcome to January's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is count sorted vowel strings. Given an integer, return the number of strings of length n that consist only of vowels a, e, i, o, u and are lexicographically sorted. A string s is lex lexicographically sorted if all valid i's um, s, i is the same or comes before the s, i plus 1 in the alphabet. Okay, so uh, there's the first approach we might think to do this is doing some sort of recursive solution. And let's reframe the problem just a little bit to make it easier. Instead of thinking of these as A, E, I, O, U, why don't we think this as like numbers, like one, two, three, um, four, five. For simplicity's sake, let's just say uh, one, two, three. And we could say have a length of two. So if we had a length of two and we want to find all the different permutations that are lexicographically sorted, what would they look like? Well, let's just look at it. Um, we had a length of one. We know we can use repeating characters, right? Because it says SI is the same or comes before. Uh, one, one would be one, one, two, one, three. Now at two, we would say two, 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 three. And anything else? Well, three, no, we can't do anything because all the numbers before that means it's gonna go in descending order. So these are the only possible combinations here, right? One, two, three, four, five. So the pattern's pretty easy. We just start at the first point, um, try to, I guess, add that into our array or whatever, and then check again recursively all the other numbers that come after it. And once we finish the length, we could add to some sort of total value. Uh, and really, we don't even need to actually store these numbers anywhere. We just want to get the total, right? So as soon as we find that we're at the end, uh, there's no more end, like values to add, then we could say, all right, we've found one possible combination, right? So the very first uh, approach, I guess, is let's try doing something recursively. So I'm going to write a recursive function here. And what we're going to pass in is the n, the number um, of how many we've added so far, as well as, let's call it uh, k. And k is going to be what value we are at inside of, you know, our, our strings, a, e, i, u. So uh, the very first thing is we want to have a base case. We'll say, look, if uh, n equals zero, meaning we've already entered all the values, then we can return one because we found one possible value here. Uh, otherwise, what do we want to do? We'll say uh, four, give it i in range of starting with zero all the way to n which is gonna be, uh, not n, I'm sorry, which should be five, right? Because we have five numbers that we can, or five vowels we can select. And this won't be zero, this is actually gonna be the uh, k that we're at. So k is gonna start at zero here, but here we're gonna, uh, let's say we'll initialize like a total here. Let's say if we make that equal to zero. For total, say plus equal to um, cursive, we'll enter in n minus one, as well as the I, which is going to be the K that we're at. And that way we'll avoid doing anything from before, otherwise it's not going to be uh, sorted, right? Once we're finished with that, we can just return the total. And what we would do here then is just return the total that we'd return here with N uh, and starting with K zero, right? So let's see if this works. Um, well, it looks like it's working, but let's just make sure. And it looks like it's working, so let's submit that. Are we going to hit time complex, time limit exception here? Um, uh oh, I thought this worked. Oh, okay, so good. That got accepted, right? So this is totally fine. This is a recursive solution. As far as time complexity goes, though, it's going to be exponential, right? Because we have to. Um, it's not going to be too bad, but depending on what the n is, I believe because n is only one through 50, uh, at the worst, it'll be like what, n to 50 factorial or something like that, right? It'll be exponential, but it's not gonna be that bad because we have some constraints here. So can we do better? What if the n is really big? Um, well, to do that, we'd actually have to go mathematical and that's a little bit more complicated. You need to know your statistics pretty well to get, that, to, get to that solution. Um, I did not, but Let's just say you want to do that. Um, let's think. 
Like we had the same example here, one, two, three, right? Uh, and we can only select two. Well, one way you can kind of think of this is um, if we could only select two, um, basically there's like, think of this as like stars and bars. What would all the possible combinations that we can make look like? For example, if we had selected uh, one and two, one, two, it would look something like we have our one represented as a star, and we have to separate that with uh, the next one. This would look something like this, right? This separation is going to indicate to us that these are different. Uh, otherwise, if we had like one, one, it would look something like something like this, right? So this extra bar here, you can kind of think that as like an extra value. And what we're trying to find is not the total number of permutations. We're trying to find the number of possible combinations that we can use with these stars being different, as well as these bars. Because uh, if you think about it, we could have any possible selection of these, uh, but there's only going to be one combination that's actually going to be in descending order, right? So if we had like one, two, uh, one, two is fine, but if we switch that around to like two, one, this would still kind of look like this, but it's not the same because these values are the same, um, but we can only go in one sort of direction. So it'd have to be only one po possible combination here. And if you know the difference between combination and permutation, uh, you should know that basically combinations mean that order doesn't matter. I mean, like order matters here, but it's only in the sense that only one possible order is going to matter for the combination. Everything else we can disregard because it's not going to be uh, sorted. Okay, so knowing that, um, then we can just go with the formula. And I thought about going deep diving here, but it was just going to take too long. Um, the equation looks something like this. So it's this here, I'll put the link in the description for Math is Fun. Basically, this like the combinations with rep repetition because we could repeat characters if we like, right? And the equation ultimately ends up looking something like this, r plus n minus one factorial divided by r factorial n minus one factorial. And n represents, let's see here, the number of things to choose from. So that'll be five. And r represents uh, basically the length, right? Like let's choose r of them with repetition allowed. So this would be our n here. So what does this look like uh, if we were to uh, write this out as a program. Uh, let me just put that right by the side here. And that's going to end up looking like, um, let's see, R n plus five, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that is right. n plus five minus one factorial. And this can be shortened to n plus four factorial. Uh, divided by r factorial, which is going to be given to us, n factorial here, uh, divided by n minus 1 factorial, which is going to be 5 minus 1 factorial. Um, we can actually just calculate that out here, right? This is going to be 4. So what's 4 times 3 times 2? That's 24. So that's 24. So that's the equation. Now, just out of curiosity, does that work? Um, I, mean, I already tried this out, and I know this does work. That's it. That's the equation, and it works. This could be simplified a little bit. Uh, what you could do is, um, because we have n plus four factorial n, like basically what that means is, this is we're going to be getting rid of the like trailing factorials here. So this ends up looking more like uh, something like n plus four times what? Let's see, n plus three times n plus two times n plus one. So let me put that in parentheses, just make sure here. And this should work as well, let me make sure. Yep. And in some ways it's probably faster if we had like a really large n value. Um, so to get into this like really mathematically, it's just gonna take too long. Uh, I hardly understand combinations and permutations myself. I just have a kind of high level understanding. Um, but really, I think the first uh, solution would do fine in an interview because that's 
really more programmatic anyway. This is more like mathematical. But if you got this, like that'd be very impressive. So maybe if you're into like data science, you might want to look into this. Okay, thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.